Dan here from Pro TV. And I'm Carl. And today we've got some slightly larger cameras than <laughs> what we've had previously. Um, today we're comparing the C200 versus the Ursa Mini Pro. There's a slight resolution difference between the two. Yep. Uh, so C200 does 4K, whereas the yep. Uh, Ursa does 4.6K. Yep, it does. They've both got super 35mm sensors um, and they both shoot raw and then and yep. um, stuff like that. So you can get some absolutely Absolute beautiful yeah, pictures brilliant out of both of these cameras. They're both really, really good on the image quality front. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so they score quite similarly, really. Yeah, sort um, of. Um, you, you could say. Again, this is going to go into codex. I'm probably getting out. Yeah, this is going to get muddled but, um, up a little bit with codex, but we can talk about yeah, codex we'll, a little bit because it does we'll make a difference. We'll jump into it more yeah. later, but the, there is the addition of ProRes in yes, um, yes, Mini Pro, whereas you only have MP4, which you could make the argument is because ProRes is a much more usable, high quality codec, codec. than either of their raw implementations and much more higher quality than the MP4 on the Canon, that most people will end up using the ProRes, mm -hmm. whereas probably most people are going to be using the MP4 on the C200. Yep. And so for, for the average user with both of these, they're mm -hmm. going to be getting better, they're going to be using a better codec, doesn't necessarily mean they get better pictures, no, but they're going to be using a better the, codec on the uh, yeah, Because the image quality from the MP4 on this mm -hmm. is brilliant. Like it's, 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 it's um it does get people were a bit disappointed that it wasn't ten bit. Yep. But it is. Which is fair is, Yeah, it's fair enough. But there's nothing wrong with it. Like absolutely. The images you get from it are you absolutely great. Absolutely, should not discount the C200 eight no. bit just yeah. because it's eight bit. You I mean, really do need to try it and judge for yourself. Is this good enough quality? Do I get banding? Do I get all these other things which we associate with eight bit? Mm -hmm. um, is it usable for me? Because. For most customers that I speak to, and enough. speak to, spoke to, and for me, it's more than good enough. Oh it's yeah, absolutely. Really good. I think when you when you see how good of an image that comes out of it, mm. you'd be very surprised. Yep. Um, we shot our M50 review. Yep. On this, and it, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It was out in the bright sunshine. Absolutely. Lots of dynamic range, and it held it. Good colours, all great. The rest of it. But the ProRes on the Ursa is lovely. Yeah. And you can shoot in 4K, and you can shoot in 4.6K. Just ever so slightly higher resolution. Yeah. It does have a really nice image as long as you keep it to the right ISOs. If you're in low light situations, it then doesn't have the best the reputation quality, for low light. It's going to be way better on the Canon. Mm -hmm. But I, for, for the image quality segment here, I think we need to assume that the situation is ideal. If, if we're lighting it, we've got all the lighting budget in the world and all the rest of it, which one's going to get us better pictures? And. I think this is a better one for you to really decide. Really close. Because mm. I, I haven't shot with really the close. Earth, so I'm a bit mm -hmm. more in the dark on that one. I'm going to um, lean, I think, towards the Earth, but only slightly, okay. I think. So that's how we're going to play? I'm going to give it just a little bit towards the Earth. Reasons being that colours are brilliant on both of them. This is going to be slightly sharper because of the extra resolution. Mm -hmm. The dynamic range is perhaps slightly more on the Ursa, um, although I haven't tested them side by side, so I might well be wrong, and the dynamic range does change in RAW versus MP4 mm -hmm. on the Canon. Um, I mean, it is so close, but I think I am going to give it to the Ursa. Okay. So next up, we've got low light performance. Um, just leading on from that point. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to spend too long talking no. about this, do we? <laughs> so, um, the ISO range on the Ursa is a lot lower than it yes. is on the C200. It maxes out at 1600 ISO. Yeah, it you can't very... actually go above 1600, yeah. which is yeah. kind of crazy, really. Yeah. For it's not very high, not is it? to be able to go up to 3200 or 6400 nowadays. Yeah. Whereas uh, the C200... check that, that they haven't changed that and stuff yeah. like that while you... Carry Whereas on, the the C two hundred on the other hand it has an ISO that maxes out at one hundred and two thousand, which is ridiculously high. Nope, <laughs> you just goes never one thousand six hundred. Yep, <laughs> which is quite limiting, really. Um, and it's noisy at one thousand six hundred. So you don't want to be using it. It's not. No. It's not a low light camera. I think. I think anyone is mistaken by thinking it is. Because it definitely isn't. No, nope, it's definitely got a reputation for um, not being a low light camera. Yeah, I think 
it's hands down down to the C200 on this one. All the way off, yeah, the scale. Okay, lenses. Um, natively, they're both EF mount. Yes. You can adapt the Ursa Mini Pro. Well, what's interesting about the Ursa Mini Pro is that it's actually got a removable turret at the front, so you can choose. So mm -hmm. the EF mount is no different to any of the other mounts that it does. It's just mm -hmm. that out of the box, it ships with an one EF of the mount. EF mount turrets. And then you can buy B4 or PL or Nikon F to replace it, and you can do that yourself. You can go to PL on the Canon C200, but you lose all the autofocus capabilities, of course, because it's PL, mm -hmm. and it has to be done by Canon at a Canon service center. So it's not something you can do for each job. Mm -hmm. It's something do, you've got to decide, do I want a PL camera yep, or, or an EF a, yeah. camera? And so... There is a bit more flexibility for the ERSA in that respect. A lot more flexibility, absolutely. Um, but could you say you get more out of the lenses on the C200 because of dual pixel autofocus, if you've got the EF version. Yes, yep. I think, I think that's, that's got to be brought into the situation, but I think the ability to swap between using small EF or smaller Nikon F um, lenses, lenses and then do a job and hire in a set of PLs or Yeah, and you, you can like swap between can depending on the job. Swap them out. I think a that lot is more flexible. So much more flexible, so Same. I think we give it to the other. Same. Okay, power, which is a different segment. Uh, yep, I've added this one because I think it is really important. It's, yeah, it's definitely talk important between these, these two. These two. Whereas um, the C200, there are, as far as I'm aware, there's only one, other than Canon's own batteries, there's only one yep. other option for batteries that you can get, which are yep. switch. Um, so Canon used BPA 30 or 60 batteries, which are specif specifically designed for the C300 Mark II mm -hmm. or um, the C200 and they use a very clever style of com lens um, battery, battery communication. <laughs> so it's actually really difficult for third party manufacturers to make a battery which communicates through that protocol. Mm -hmm. um, and so what SWIT have done, which is what we've got on very this interesting. one, is a little battery which has a little cable which gives you a spare detap there and it actually powers the camera through the mains port mm -hmm. rather than through the battery slots but it mounts on. So there are third party options, but... One interesting point about that is you can, by using that, you can hot swap the battery. Yes, which is true. A bit of a niche sort of feature from it, but it can, yeah. it can save you in a pinch sometimes. Um, but then the, the USA has slightly more expensive V-Lock batteries. Yes. Which are, yeah, they, they are considerably more expensive than yeah, I mean, the, the BPA 30s or BPA 60s aren't cheap. Um, no. And so it's probably not that fair to say that this uses expensive batteries and the C200 doesn't. The C200 yeah. batteries are pricey true, too. True, true. Um, but the, um, the V-Locks have really? got a much broader range, so you mm -hmm. can go way higher on them for much larger options, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. I think... and on average are slightly more expensive. But the big difference to me is that you're gonna need more of them because this is 40 um, watt hour draw, mm -hmm. whereas this is only 18.5, which is crazy yep. difference. Double. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's over double the power draw for this camera. Um, and so that is gonna make a massive, massive difference. You're yep. gonna need twice as many batteries. And when you need twice as many batteries of a battery um, price like these ones are, mm, yeah, that's a big difference. Makes a big difference. As well, it's a lot harder to carry more of them. You can see the size Absolutely. difference. I mean, it depends on the V-Log. Yep. But um, you know, you can you can get four or five of them to one sort of PB, which is yep. You know, if you don't if you're trying to run light, it's not ideal. Absolutely. So um, this one's going to the C200, but I wouldn't say buy too much. Mm, I'd say buy a fair little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not hands down. More but affordable batteries, which you're going to need half as many of them. Mm -hmm. I reckon it's the C200. Sweet. Okay, codec. So we've already covered this ever so slightly. Um, both of them you can record raw. Yep. Um, which is brilliant. Uh, the, it's Cinema it, DNG, if I'm exactly 
not mistaken, on the uh, Earth set where it's cinema or light. Yes, which is Canon's own format, and there is a big difference between them. We say that mm -hmm. they both do RAW, but Canon Cinema RAW Lite is a much more usable RAW codec. It mm -hmm. gives you one file which you can open up in Resolve, and you can open up in, in Premiere, Premiere Final and Cut. Final Cut, and you can edit natively and scrub back and forward and play back yeah, smoothly. Yeah, which makes your wor workflow so much simpler, whereas Absolutely the workflow for DNG is a nightmare. little bit more of a headache. <laughs> I really don't like the way that Cinema DNG works. You get a folder and it's just full of 10,000 images. And so, it's a nightmare. yes, it can be recompiled by something like Resolve, but it is a bit of a... It's, it's just nowhere near as nice it's, a, yeah, a format. Nowhere near as convenient. And it's much harder for um, the editing software to play back, so mm -hmm. it doesn't play back anywhere near as smoothly. And so um, I think in terms of raw codecs, the C200 definitely wins there. Yes. But, but those aren't raw the codecs, codecs aren't the only codecs. And, then, uh, and like we touched on it earlier, it's you know, MP4, then ProRes. Yep. Um, so the ProRes um, can be scaled as well. So you can go up to ProRes HQ for really large, high-quality files, or yep. you can scale it right down to something like ProRes Lite or ProRes Proxy to give you yep. really long record times, but still those that nice, higher-quality files just like mm -hmm. compressed more. So you have a you have um, a lot more variety in the ESO. Yes. So even though this just as Pro is, it has got flexibility mm -hmm. there. Canon um, has slightly more options. You can do MP4, um, and you can do XFAVC now. Mm -hmm. um, both of them though are 8-bit, okay. quite small um, in terms of file size and compression. Mm -hmm. Brilliant for quick turnaround, runaround stuff like that. For low file sizes, for the sort of work that we do, where it's, it's long pieces of camera yep. and that sort. of Thing. It's quick. It's absolutely brilliant for, um, mm -hmm. but I would personally choose ProRes over that. If, if, if you could, you, I don't think many people would choose MP4. Yeah. So, okay. on the lower end... The, on the lower end, yes. This works, the, the, it has, has that huge range. But on the higher end... That when, it comes, when it comes to RAW, the, I think the convenience of some RAW light is... It's quite a hef it's quite a hefty thing to, I think to maybe balance it out a bit more. It's a difficult one. I would say the Ursa because you get a much greater range and choice between what you can record, whereas the C two hundred it's literally just one or the other. Yes. But I think people would it's a much better raw implementation and I think oh, yeah. people would and should use it more than they will. Mm -hmm. or do on the Ursa Mini Pro. And so having a codec which people don't use versus having a codec which people do use is a big deal. I, maybe it's a draw. I'd happily call it a draw. I mean, it's... Should we call it a draw? Yeah, it's a... <laughs> I mean, we're very indecisive as it is. I mean, for raw, I want to give it to the oh, yeah, 200 well, Hands and down, hands down for the Everything draw. else, the normal compressed for things, I want to give it to the Ursa, so let's meet in the middle and call it a draw. Okay, sweet. The Ursa Mini Pro, with its accessories, is cheaper. Yeah, yeah. only by a little not by, bit. Not by a lot. For so the C200. It's a few hundred um, quid. So that's not a lens on either of them. And by the accessories, what I mean by that is I mean the shoulder mount kit. Mm -hmm. Not all the shape yeah, this stuff is that we've got on here, but the minute. Ursa Mini shoulder mount kit. And their viewfinder, which you actually don't need to have. So you can make the Ursa a lot more um, affordable. affordable. Mm -hmm. But the viewfinder is very nice. Yeah. Um, is very good. And the C200 has one built on. But it, that it, one is nowhere near as good as that one. No, I mean, you, 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 can't, you can't use that if you have that on your shoulder. Um, no, true. It's just one at the back. It, yeah, it's on the back. Only really going to use it on the tripod. So the Ursa got to win this, right? Yeah. Audio. Um, so they both have two XLRs, so yep. same you know, uh, yep. amount. They're at the back Box. sort of sticking up on the Ursa, and they're at the back sort of on the side on yep. the C200. It's a little bit of a better placement on the I think it's a better C200. placement. I've never liked the XLRs which stick up. No, like especially that. if you if you're gonna use the top handle and you have wires exactly. yep, sticking they, around. If you're holding it like that, they can get a little in the bit way of, of your wrist. 
Or is this, if you, if you had a, a mic mounted on it, it would be sort of this side and you can just feed the wire straight Absolutely. to it. It's not really going to get in the way too much. Yep. Um, one point that you did bring up earlier was the hard stops on the audio dials mm. on the Ursa. So the audio dials on the C200 are the same as they are on most cameras or camcorders, something mm -hmm. like that. It's a little physical dial that goes between 0 and 10, mm -hmm. and it, it's got hard stops on either end. Blackmagic did add audio dials on this, so these ones down here. They're on the back of the LCD screen, which is a bit weird, so if you've yeah. got the LCD screen open, you can't see them. And they don't have hard stops, so they'll just carry on twisting mm -hmm. around and around and around. Whereas the C200, you can see, is they do just stop, I mean, that's not going anywhere, it gets there. Which is, um, I mean, these are definitely just a simple dial to control software, whereas that feels like a hardware yeah. dial. I'd much prefer, and I think most camera operators would much prefer using that style. Yeah, it's, it's what they're used to. Absolutely. So that one's got to go towards C200. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they both max out 120 frames per second in mm -hmm. 1080p, mm -hmm. but the Ursa Mini Pro crops in from my wire. Yes, whereas the C200 uses doesn't. the full sensor. I mean, I haven't shot too much slow motion, to be honest, with the um, Ursa Mini Pro. I have done a little bit with the C200, and it is a little bit soft. I, to be honest, think they're pretty close in terms of slow motion. Neither of them are fantastic slow motion cameras. Um, one thing that you haven't written down, does the S Mini Pro do 4K 60p? I don't know off the top of my head. Yes, it does. It does, okay, right. Pretty sure it does. Let me have a look. Turn it on because one thing that's great about the C200 is it does 4K 60p. Yes, which so is that would be the, It would be the thing for me at the minute to swear over that a little bit more. Just so, while he looks. HD. Yes, it does. Yep. It does. Okay. It does. So how do you want to call this one then? Because they are both pretty much neck and neck. You could say, because the C200 doesn't crop in this, to the sense you get more out of it, but is that, do you get better image quality whilst in slow motion? Uh, without doing side by side test, I just don't know. But what we do know is that the C200 doesn't crop, and mm -hmm. that means that you don't have to change lens when you go into slow motion, which is a big deal. So mm. I want to give it to the C200, but not Sweet. by a crazy amount. Okay. So, final point, which is form factor and convenience. This is one of my favourite Yeah, categories. this is always the longer one. This is, this is always <laughs> the one we talk for the most yeah. on, because it does make such a big difference. It does. Um, and although these are quite similar cameras, yeah, they are they're very different, different. ergonomics. Yep, yeah, whereas... Um, the the Osmo Mini Pro, when you have the shoulder mount kit, yep. is designed to be a shoulder mounted camera. Yes, it's um, it's a lot heavier than the C two hundred. It's a lot heavier. I mean, I've written down the weights it's, there, but oh, it's yes. two point eight kilos for the Osmo Mini Pro. Yep. Um, so that's for a reasonable package with mm -hmm. viewfinder and stuff like that. And for the C two hundred, it's one point five kilos. Just so a lot lighter. A, mm -hmm. It's nearly half the weight. Yeah, which does make a big deal. Um, it's worth pointing out that both of these cameras in front of us here have got the shape bits and bobs yep. on them, so for different arms and a nicer top handle the, and mounts and stuff like that on the C200. The, um, the Ursa Mini Pro shoulder mount kit isn't yes. too much different from that, it's just minus one arm. Yeah, you don't get the second and slightly arm, less and this doesn't have as many yeah. um, options to manoeuvre it into place. This is, um, I so mean, I do find it a little bit uncomfortable. But the top handles, um, the Black Magic one, the bottom base plate is the Black Magic one. Mm -hmm. so it's more or less um, all there. But this is definitely designed to be a shoulder, shoulder camera. Mount. Yeah, I mean, I mean you it's can here tell. on thing. Mm. You've got a viewfinder. It's lovely. It's perfectly, perfectly positioned. Yep, your controls are here. It's all good. Yeah. It's great. Whereas this one, without without the optional, like the shape kit or any other accessory, it's a lot yeah. more difficult to get it on your shoulder. Yeah, because um, we've got this arm. This arm should it really, shape. It really gets the hand grip. Um, but we don't have a proper shoulder pad, we could add one from shape mm -hmm. here. But it's definitely one that's designed to be on the tripod or sort of cradled in your hands like that, sort of yeah. DSLR style. Um, so they are very different ergonomics. Yes, two, two different ballparks, aren't they? 
I'm not um, sure which one of them I prefer. Again, a job answer. It does depend. The shoulder mount does depend on the type of job. Um, I prefer the shoulder mount design, but I'd prefer the weight of the C200. Yep, um, and hold that for a lot longer. Absolutely. The big thing for me, though, for um, convenience, mm. is the dual pixel auto yep. focus. That was always going to come into it. Um, I mean, we say this with every Canon camera. We yeah, we, we, we never don't bring it up. <laughs> it's, um, it makes a huge deal. And if, if you've never used it, it can be hard to trust an autofocus system, especially for video. Yep. But yep. this one really is yep. brilliant. I mean, it's on right now. It probably yep. doesn't need to be on right now because we're about f4, so it's depth. But yep. and we're not know. exactly moving too much. No, but, but it's all the things there. when I moved back then to put that on my shoulder, I might have dipped out of focus. Whereas yep. I know that we won't have because of the autofocus. Mm -hmm. And it is actually really practical for the type of customer that goes for these yes. cameras. People who make their living from video, and a lot of that often comes from doing interviews. I'm sure most of you out there have to do paid interviews mm. um, as a serious part of your, your income. Um, and the nice thing about having dual pixel autofocus for interviews is you can just sit it on, leave the camera next to you, and then you can be talking to the person and just knowing that that camera next to you is getting the focus. You don't have to be constantly looking over towards the camera and No, you, you, you can trust it. And all that if, there's no, if you can't operate the camera for whatever reason, it's exactly. absolutely brilliant. It makes um, a huge, huge deal. It's, it's especially when you're, you're shooting on your own. And just oh, like yeah. the, 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 the touch screen as well, which is sort of one thing that's kind of yep. sometimes uh, missed out on, but it's so convenient just to tap the screen really easy to control just from a, a to b and you don't have to worry about Absolutely. anything um, the other thing that is really important is the built-in nds they both yes, have built-in mm -hmm. nds which is fantastic but the ursa goes up to six stops so it goes okay. it's clear two stops four stops six stops mm -hmm. whereas the c200 will do that and then go to eight stops and ten stops Cheers. so you get much more nd okay so you do you do win on that respects um Ooh, from here. The viewfinder. I want to talk a little bit about the viewfinder. Um, just because having a proper viewfinder is amazing. I mean, yeah. it's just a closed, shut off environment for you to properly judge your image from. And, and you can bright see it outside. sunlight. Yeah, in bright sunlight, that is yep. so, so useful. I mean, not to say that there's anything wrong with the C200s. It's no, it's fine. Great. It's so great to mm -hmm. have it built in. but. I, I mean, I haven't shot with the US Mini Pro. I have played around with it a good bit. And the viewfinder is very, very nice on that. Um, I have shot with it, and very quickly, you just end up ignoring the screen and using the viewfinder. Yeah. The viewfinder is just so much better. And for the price that it is, is an absolute steal. Mm. You can use the C700's viewfinder that Canon make with the C200, and that is an even better viewfinder. It is amazingly good. But it's, it's got pricey. a mouth-watering <laughs> price tag. Uh, you probably wouldn't absolutely. end up using it. Ooh. Yeah. So this is a viewfinder that I reckon most people with this camera will actually own. Mm, it's worth the step it up. it's just brilliant. Mm. Um, but there's no waveform on the Ursa Mini Pro. No, I was very shocked to find yeah. that out earlier. I, I thought... So was I. <laughs> I, mean, I thought... Correct I was, us if we're wrong yes. on this in the comment section down below. Because we but, don't know if we... If, I don't know what firmware that camera is on, we don't know if it may have been added um, during the but time we prepped. But did a bit of research and I don't think it has. Yes. And if Just there is no waveform on here, if it doesn't. It's a right pain, that's that's the way that we prefer to, to, to expose, expose. Definitely, um, I mean you can get around it by using... Yep. There's yeah, false colour, there's um, histogram, there's zebras. Or you are using an external monitor. And an external monitor um, would give it to you, absolutely. But is, that is the sort of thing that you would expect to have built in. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, it was a bit of a shock to find out it yep. didn't have it. Yep. Whereas um, the C200 has it. Yep, for the record. <laughs> yeah. And the low light is better on the C200. Yes, which is so, a big one in the convenience sector. To round up. Ra yep, because we're going to need to do this. The <laughs> low light is better, um, the NDs are better, yep. dual pixel autofocus, yes. there's waveform, it's lighter, mm -hmm. and on the C200. The Ursa has a shoulder mounted design. Yep. It's got much better menu systems, which is so quick to yep, move very, through. It's very, got very the easy. fantastic viewfinder, which will really make your life easier when mm -hmm. you're shooting outside. Um, but 
I think the C200 is a more convenient camera. Yeah. I'm going to have to agree with that one, I think. So they're really quite similar cameras yep. at the end of the day, aren't they? But they, it's very hard to compare cameras like this because they, they just have to do so many jobs. Yeah, they and have they to are go all the way from that lower end run and run, run and gun event stuff right up to mm -hmm. the high end raw cinematic workflow. And they, they both can do both of those things. Um, arguably, okay. the C two hundred is a little bit better for run and gun and uncontrolled yep. situations because yep. of its better low light and then yep. your autofocus. But and effectively, not, is just as good at the raw cinematic production. Yeah, easily, mm. um, not to say the Ursa isn't a good. Camera, it's a no, absolutely not. I love the answer. Absolutely Ursa. solid. Some of my favourite pictures um, from the cameras that we sell at the moment mm. are from the Ursa. The, the Ursa has a lovely image. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really a great does. indie filmmaker's camera as well because of yep. the price. It's um, brilliant. But I do like the C200. There's a reason to choose it for most yes, of our there work. Yes, there is. Mm. Um, it's a great camera. Cool. So. Hope you you found that useful. Um, let us know what you think of either of these two cameras. Do you think there's anything we've missed out? Is there a camera that you want us to compare? Do you want us to compare one of these to a different camera? Or is there something which we haven't looked at which you think we need to look at? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you want to buy either of these, of course, you can head over to the ProView website and purchase them there or just get in touch with our sales team mm -hmm. and they'll help you make the decision of which one to choose from um, if we haven't <laughs> been able to help you because no. we tend to confuse we, we, things we, more yeah. than... <laughs> We're very indecisive. <laughs> but it's very useful to sort of bring a lot of the points up that you would sometimes miss out on when you're sort of comparing them. Absolutely. So, it's hard just to look at a spec sheet. Yeah, definitely. Right. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.